What? You would have done the same thing too. So. Another video for King's War and this time we are talking about the Salamanders. Now for anyone who doesn't understand what that might mean in some cases, Salamander is sometimes a word used instead of um, lizard man or reptile bloke or somewhere around that sort of lines. It's a two-legged humanoid um, well, reptilian sort of person. Um, the salamanders are kind of grouped into separate ones. You've got like your yeah, uh, primes and your unblooded and whatnot. They're like, I think they're probably about orc sort of height, maybe a bit taller. Um, and they're muscular. They're, they're basically um, humanoid, humanoid lizards essentially with bigger teeth you've got then got the kakoki which i probably pronounced that wrong but are smaller they are more adapt at scout work they've got blowpipes and the what like you've then got the tyrants which are way way bigger they're sort of like um alligator sort of humanoid creatures but obviously taller and bigger and then you've got the more bestial sort of category which you've got like um you know raptors you um drakes that sort of thing they're also in tune with fire so they've got a fair few fire elemental type units to go through as well so if you're following along you will need in the uncharted empires third edition book to be on page 52 Yes, you'll need the big rule book for the rules and whatnot, but for the army list, you just need Uncharted Empires. The alignment is good, and their special upgrade is Effigy Fire. Once per game, after the unit rolls to damage in melee, you may choose to re-roll D3 of the dice that failed to damage. Once used, the unit's Effigy of Fire is destroyed and cannot be used for the remainder of the game. Uh, you're basically getting a weakened version of Vicious, which is not bad. Um, you might... Vicious, you reroll ones that fail to wound. This is better in some respects because you reroll D3 dice that fail to hit, doesn't matter if they rolled ones, which. In some ways it's better, in some ways it's not. If you just need one or two hits, more wounds should I say this might be the thing you need it's not bad it's not bad so starting with the infantry on page 52 they are the Gokoku warriors and I've probably mispronounced that and I'm probably going to do so as we keep going speed 6 melee 5 plus defense 3 plus troop 10 attacks nerve 8 10 60 points regiment 12 attacks nerve 12 14 95 points Horde, 25 attacks, nerve, 1921, 155 points. Legion, 30 attacks, nerve, 25, 27, 230 points. They've got Va Pathfinder and Vicious in melee. I would probably ha hoard them out or have them as a Legion. Most often you'd probably have them as a Horde because they're under the 200 point mark and the nerve's pretty good and the attacks are pretty good. Obviously the downside is they're a bit squishy defence-wise and they can't hit that well because their melee is only five. They have got Vicious, which is really helpful, but the more there is a um, chaff unit, really, more than anything else. Next we have the Heavy Infantry. 
starting on page 52. So, starting with the Salamander Primes. Speed 5, melee 4+, plus, defense 5+. Plus. Troop, 10 attacks, nerve, 10-12, 90 points. Regiment, 12 attacks, nerve, 14-16, 135 points. Horde, 25 attacks, nerve, 21-23, 255 points. Crushing strength, 1. Uh, exchange shield for two-handed weapons, lowering defense to 4, in increasing crushing strength to 2 for 3. Not bad. Effigy of 5 for 5 points. Um, for 5 points it's not a bad upgrade so maybe take the Effigy of Fire. Um, you've already got Crusher Strength 1 so you might not want to do the um, 2 handed weapons on all units but Crusher Strength 2 even at Defence 4 that is going to hurt. I, if you're doing that I'd hold them out otherwise just keep them a regiment. The Nerve's not bad and Defence defense of 5 with Crusher Strength 1 that's still not not bad. I mean, 135 points is pretty, pretty good. Salamander or Blooded is next for the heavy infantry. Speed five, melee four plus, defense four plus. Regiment 15 attacks, nerve 13, 15, 120 points. Horde 30 attacks, nerve 20, 22, 200 points. Thunder charge one, wild charge d3. They can take an effigy of fire for five points. Again, they're not bad. They are a bit cheaper than the primes though they're only 50 a regiment's only 15 points cheaper than a prime regiment and a horde is only 25 points cheaper than a prime horde the problem is their defense isn't as good and they don't have crushing strength rather they've got thunderous charge that being said though they are technically faster because of the wild charge d3 so you've got a minimum charge range of 11 maximum charge range of 13 um, they've got a few more attacks as well which is pretty decent their nerve is a bit lower as well um, maybe take them as a horde I won't bother as a regiment because of them, for them extra 15 points you might as well take the Salamander Prime regiment next is the Ancient Ancients should I say and they are irregular speed 4 melee 3 plus defense 6 plus troop 12 10 attacks, nerve, dash 13, 120 points. Regiment, 12 attacks, nerve, dash 17, 185 points. Crush strength 1, inspiring. Effigy of 5 for 5 points. So basically, these are really old salamanders that have got on a bit. That's why they're a bit slower speed-wise. But they can hit really hard. Um, attacks are... I um, know, oh attacks are the same as the primes. Nerves better, can't hold them out unfortunately. Uh, they've got inspiring, which is great. Defensive six, hits on threes in close combat. Crush strength one, inspiring, pretty decent. I would, um, yeah, I'd probably take an effigy of fire all the time for Asians. Their really big downside is their only speed four, so. You, you can make them work, but you really have to make them work. I would maybe, and this is only a maybe, consider having them as a troop just for the inspiring. It's not cheap inspiring, but your opponent has to charge into them and can't just ignore them because they're not a um, hero. Um, I mean, 185 points, that's... That's 50 points more than a regiment of primes. Defense is better. Hitting close combat's better. They've got inspiring. Um, nerves better. Um, yes, yeah, that slow speed. That's that's a real downside. Other than that, they they're not too bad at all. Finally, we have the Salamander Ceremonial Guard. Speed 5, melee 4 plus, defense 5 plus. Troop 10 attack, 12 attack, sorry, not 10. Um, nerve 10, 12, 105 points. Regiment 15 attacks, nerve 14, 16, 160 points. Or horde 30 attacks, nerve 21, 23, 260 points. Crush strength 1 and phalanx can take an effigy of fire for 5 points. These are pretty decent. They are a little bit more expensive, uh, 25 points more for a regiment of these than a regiment of Salamander Primes. 
but they've got a few more attacks and they've got phalanx which against the pesky cavalry and thunderous charges is a really good thing so mm, um, unless you can have a legion of Gakoku warriors maybe not salamander unblooded you'd hold them out um, they're a bit better defensive wise and hitting wise than the Kokokis. Uh, Salamander Primes are a good all round unit, may come hit really hard but lower the defence or give them all of them have good defence but a little bit less strength. The Ancients are slow but they have good defence and hit really hard. And the Ceremonial Guard have got a fair number of attacks and got Phalanx, so pick your poison there really. Next we have the Ranged Infantry, starting on page 53. They are both irregular. Starting with the Corsairs. Now the Corsairs, before we go on, are basically Lizardmen Pirates. And yes, I mean that in every sense of the word. So there's only one model called Firebrand, which we'll get onto on the unique units. But you've got like pirate hats, twin pistols, um hook hook I suppose you could do hook hands, peg legs, all that kind of stuff. Though I don't know how a salamander would go yar. I suppose it more like rawr. Anyway, um, Corsairs. Speed 5, melee 4+, plus, range 4+, plus, defence 4+. Plus. Troop 8 attacks, nerve 9-11, 130 points. Regiment 10 attacks, nerve 13-15, 170 points. Crush strength 1, and they've got fire locks, which are 18 inch range, piercing 1, steady aim. Um, as a troop or a regiment, it's not really a bad idea either way. The main downside is that the defence is a bit low, but they've still got crusher strength. They've got really good um, ranged attack with the piercing. Their nerve isn't bad either. Defence-wise, they're not terrible for a range unit with defence 4. Um, shoot on fours with steady aim. Um, I mean, it's one of the range units. I'd say, yeah, go from as a regiment. Go from as a regiment. Next, we have the Kokoki Hunters. Speed seven, melee five plus. Range five plus. Defense three plus. Troop eight attacks, nerve eight ten, ninety five points. Regiment ten attacks, nerve twelve fourteen. 125 points. They've got Pathfinder and Stealthy, and they've got Blowpipes, which are 18 inch range and Vicious at range. Uh, can exchange Blowpipe for a bow, which are 24 inch range, uh, Vicious at ranged, for 5 points for a troop, 10 points for a regiment. I would honestly do that because that extra 6 inch, I know they've got speed of 7, but you really want that extra 6 inch range because they are just going to get slaughtered in close combat. And hitting on fives, you really want to be as far away as your opponent as you can. So that Pathfinder, Stealthy and Speed of 7 is really going to help. But I'd always take bows. Um, take them as troop. I wouldn't bother as a regiment. Next we have the Cavalry on page 53. There's only one and they are the... Another name, Mantic Goddamn. Kayensaw. K... Kai... Seno, Seno, Lancers. Speed 8, melee 4 plus, defence 5 plus. Troop 10 attacks, nerve 11 13, 125 points. Regiment 20 attacks, nerve 14 16, 195 points. Crush strength 1 and thunderous charge 1. These ain't bad, at least unlike a lot of cavalry, at least they've got the crushing strength and the thunderous charge rather than just the thunderous charge yes it's a lower thunderous charge than most cavalry of this design but that's why they've got the crushing strength at a regiment they've got more attacks than most at a troop i think it's slightly less if i remember correctly nerves not bad um everything's pretty solid Points wise, they're also a little bit cheaper because they hit on fours rather than threes, but they have got the crushing strength, which kind of more than makes up for it. Next, we have the swarm on page 53. They are the ember sprites and they are irregular. 
Speed 6, melee 5 plus, range 4 plus, defense 3 plus. Regiment, 7 attacks, nerve, dash 11, 8 points. Horde, 14 attacks, nerve, dash 14, 135 points. Scout, shambling and vicious. They've got flame belch, which is 12 inch range, steady aim. It's not bad, I suppose. I'd have them as a horde because that nervous regiment is a bit low. Their attack's a bit low because hitting in me melee on a five isn't that great. Um, I suppose a regiment would be cheap, but a horde just makes more sense because at least you get a not so bad shooting attack. And they're still not bad points wise. But. They're not, they're not, definitely not the worst swarm ever. Next we have the large infantry on page 53. Starting with the fire elementals. Speed 6, melee 4 plus, defense 5 plus. Regiment, 9 attacks, nerve, dash 14, 130 points. Horde, 18 attacks, nerve, dash 17, 220 points. Crush strength 2, pathfinder, shambling, vicious in melee. Um. Normal fire elementals in the Forces of Nature book didn't have Vicious, I believe. Um, still got Crush Strength 2, though. Um, main downside about these is, I suppose, they're a bit slow. But Shambling can be used as a good side. If you get enough Shambling off, then they can just motor into your opponent. No problem. Nerve's not bad either. They're pretty spot on. Pathfinder's also a helpful boon and Vicious. Nothing more to say than that then. There's always going to be ones you roll to wound. There's always going to be the ones. Next we have the Tyrants. Speed 6, melee 4+, plus, defence 4+. plus. Regiment, 15 attacks, nerve, dash 14, 145 points. Horde, 30 attacks, nerve, dash 17, 240 points. Crush strength 2, wild charge D3. And can take an effigy of fire for 5 points. Uh, if it, I'd probably go for the effigy of fire most of the time. They've got Crush Strength 2, they've got Wild Charge, so when charging they are a bit faster than the Fire Elementals, unless you've got the Surge going off, which can technically make them faster than the Tyrants, so it depends what you're going. Um, the attacks of the Tyrants is a lot more, obviously. Um, other than that, they are pretty similar. I Bows really, the only thing you're really going on for either of these is the number of attacks. You're getting nearly double the attacks for the fire, uh, for the tyrants over the fire elementals. Um, I would go for the tyrants in most cases because the amount of attacks is just ridiculous. The vicious and pathfinder does help. And if you're taking on a fair few wizards, then the shambling can help as well. But the amount of attacks, especially if you hoard them out, is just painful. So next we have their large cavalry on page 54. Starting with the Scorch Wings, and they are regular. Speed 10, melee 3 plus, range 4 plus, defense 3 plus. Regiment, 6 attacks, nerve 11, 13, 130 points. Horde, 12 attacks, nerve, 14, 16, 200 points. Fly, nimble, pathfinder, thunder charge, 1. Fastbox, which is 18 inch range and steady aim. I'd like to see what these models actually end up being. Either little phoenixes, pterodactyls, little dragons. It'd be nice to see, I suppose. Um, thing with these are they're trying to be a catch-all sort of unit. Uh, jack of all trades, if you will. The problem is that their shooting, while accurate, doesn't have any piercing. Their close combat, while hitting on three, so barely accurate. There's only got Thunderous Charge, which, um, unless you're getting the charges off, ain't going to mean much. At least they've got the Nimble and Pathfinder, which really, really does help. And the Fly, again, really helps. I'd probably have them as a regiment to outflanking. In most cases, I wouldn't bother having them as a horde unless you really want to try harassing people with shooting. You could harass um, units that ha on defence four or lower with the shooting. Um, you that could really be a good thing on um, 
hordes and legions where yes they've got a high nerve but if you keep pe peppering them down they are going to fold but I'd use them as an outflanking unit um, just as have them as a regiment I won't bother having them as a horde in most cases next then is the Rhinosaur Cavalry yes it's a unit I can actually pronounce the name of speed 7 melee 3 plus defense 5 plus regiment 9 attacks nerve dash 15 150 points horde 18 attacks nerve dash 18 250 points brutal crush strength 1 thunderous charge 2 so it's essentially a reptilian rhino sort of thing with a lizard on top or maybe two lizards there's no models for them at the minute um, these are decent defense of five hitting on threes in close combat attacks aren't bad they can make a mockery out of any defense thunderous charge two and crusher strength one which yeah those earth elementals they're not gonna like them at all and brutal that's really really gonna hurt again like the scorch wings you could use them as an outflanking unit but you're best off just using them as a straightforward charging unit have some units go first to whittle whittle the big things down then have them going after just to smash whatever's left um, you could just have an army of these if you want because they're not irregular <laughs> which is ridiculous i wouldn't i wouldn't advise it because you would be lacking in certain areas like maneuverability but for sheer raw thumping power yes so next we have the monsters starting on page 54 the greater fire elemental then monster spellcaster rank zero speed six melee four plus defense five plus eight attacks nerve dash 18 175 points crush strength three pathfinder shambling vicious in melee and it's got fireball eight it's not bad monster it's not bad monster at all attacks are a little bit low only 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 a smidge um probably about two attacks too low and that's just me uh, nerve is pretty decent crush strength three is always a decent thing Pathfinder, great vicious in melee. Shame it hasn't got vicious at range, otherwise that fireball eight would be really, really good. Uh, 175 points, I think, is about spot on for what it can do. The shambling might be a issue, but then again, if you've got surge, not really much of an issue. Next is the Lecleodon. Speed six, melee five plus, range four plus, defense four plus. Five attacks, nerve. 11, 13, 85 points. Got a crush strength one and caustic spit, which is 18 inch range. Piercing one, stay aim. Now, these, the next two, this one and the next one I'm going to talk about, are two living war machines, essentially. This one is kind of like a long range flamethrower where it just belches um, acid breath at you or. Or vomits acid at you, I suppose. Um, piercing one, steady aim with five attacks, eighty-five points. It's it's all right. Um, it's all right in close combat as well. Cheap attacks with cost strength one. I'd I'd use it as a living war machine just to move forward a little bit, hurt enemy units. Um, go go for the hordes. Mm, would you go for the hordes? With them? Yeah, maybe maybe go thin out the hordes as the as the old phrase is, I suppose. Next is the Com Komodon, which I suppose would be kind of like a big Komodo dragon. No model for it, I don't think. Uh, speed 5, melee 5+, plus, range 5+, plus, defense 4+. Plus. 3 attacks, nerve 11, 13, 115 points. Blast D3 plus 1, D3 in melee, crush strength 1 and vicious. Uh, Bile Spew, which is 36 inch range, Blast, D3 plus 1, and Piercing 1. So again, it's like a living war machine. Um, it's a lot more interesting than the Lechleodon. The Lechleodon is a bit more definite in the fact that it definitely does fire attacks all the time and not going to be any different. The Komododon is a bit more risky, where it starts with lower attacks but can really rack up the damage a lot lot quicker if you're really lucky in close combat for instance the blast d3 means you've got a minimum of one one hit on them 
but a maximum of nine which is getting pretty pretty decent um at range you've got a maximum of 10 hits at range which again is pretty decent it hasn't got steady aim range so you have to be careful at that but it has got a range of 36 inch so it's not going to be that much of an issue plus you can hide it behind infantry because infantry being height 2 and the Commododon and the Lecleodon are both height 3 so hide them behind infantry and just shoot forward wherever you can you're still getting the cover I maybe use the Lecleodon for close combat maybe uh, maybe the Commododon but it's a bit more risky to use we have the Titans and there's three which most factions have got one and then a a few hero ones or they've got two at the most um, this has got three and they're not heroes hmm. starting on page 54 starting with the fire drake then speed 7 melee 4 plus range 4 plus defense 5 plus 12 attacks nerve 16 18 210 points crush strength 2 nimble and it's got fire breath with which is 12 inch range steady aim it's basically a slightly smaller dragon without wings that's why it's a fair bit cheaper and its crushing strength isn't as good it hasn't got anyone riding it which i'm assuming that's why it hasn't got inspiring but then again it's not a hero so inspiring's not really a thing on it it's got a good number of attacks with crush strength too which is pretty good its nerve isn't bad at all though it can be wavered so watch out for that and the fire breath while short range it's got steady aim and 12 attacks on it that's that's pretty pretty powerful next we have the kokoki oh, the kokoki slasher right mantic do a goblin slasher which is a basically a giant um non-flying dragony sort of thing on four legs with a howder with about three i think goblins in it with a um bolt thrower mounted on it same thing but with the gakokis on it speed seven melee three plus range five plus defense five plus eight attacks nerve 16 18 210 points crush strength two and pathfinder sharp stick thrower which is 18 uh, 36 inch range uh two attacks blast d3 piercing two a steady aim which isn't bad um it's kind of like fire drake except it's not a good at range and its attacks at close combat isn't as good it actually is a bit more accurate in close combat than the fire drake though i suppose that's the um the trade-off and the slashes also got pathfinder um while well, this fire drake got nimble so yeah that's the thing do you want better shooting do you want more attacks and do you want steady aim go for the fire drake do you want longer range shooting with more accuracy in close combat and with a bit of negation of the terrain go for the slasher Finally, we have the Phoenix for the Titans. Uh, Spellcaster rank 0. Speed 10, melee 3 plus, defense 3 plus. 5 attacks, nerve 14, 16, 195 points. Crush strength 1, fly, nimble, radiance of life, regeneration 4 plus. It's got fireball 10 and heal 5. This is a support Titan. It can do close combat. Crush strength 1, hitting on 3s, 5 attacks. It can though i really would not put in into close combat in anything other than heroes or troops and in that instance you want to have it against troops with low attacks you don't want to put against say like berserkers or the um, reapers because the reapers the reapers will really will kill it and um, fireball 10 is a really good peppering peppering option you've got heal five and radiance of life so have it near some units heal them for one wound and then heal a unit for five wounds it's a good support option but really it's not much more than that next we have the heroes starting on page 55 
First one is the Clan Lord, Heavy Infantry Hero. Speed 5, melee 3 plus, defense 5 plus. 5 attacks, nerve 13, 15, 100 points. Crush strength 2, individual, inspiring, mighty. Mount on the Raptor, increases speed to 8 and change into hero cavalry for 35 points. And an effigy of fire for 5 points. Um, effigy of fire is probably a must on these if you take them. Chances are you will miss with a few of these attacks, so you might as well take one for that off chance it might happen. You never know. Having on a raptor isn't a bad idea either because it's mighty, it is going to be a road hunt for your opponent. If you do take that, it is a hun well, if you take both of the upgrades, it's 140 points, which it isn't cheap, but it has got crush strength 2 and it's on 3s with 5 attacks, so it's not it's not bad. Um it's not something I'd go full, full on in. I mean, how many points is the Ancients? Um, a troop of Ancients is only 20 points more than one of them. Than a Clan Lord. So, um, yeah, they're not bad. Next we have the Herald, which is Heavy Infantry Hero. Speed 5, melee 4 plus, defense 5 plus. 1 attack, nerve 10, 12, 60 points. Crush strength 1, individual and inspiring. You can mount on a raptor, which changes it to speed 8 and changing to hero cavalry for 25 points. It's kind of cheap, inspiring. Um, people like them, they try, may, seem to get them to work. <sighs> I, I, I really don't, but hey, you do you. Next we have the Mage Priest, Heavy Infantry Hero, Spellcast Rank 2, Speed 5, Melee 4+, plus, Defense 5+, plus. 1 Attack, Nerve 10-12, 90 points, Crush Strength 1, Individual, Inspiring, Flame Bound only, uh, Fuel for the Fire, well within 6 inch of another friendly core Flame Bound unit, this unit can re-roll all to hit rolls of, of a natural unmodified one with Fireball, Bane, Chant, Heal and Surge. Comes with Fireball 10 as standard. You can mount on a Raptor, increases his speed to 8 and change into Hero Cavalry for 25 points. Bane Champ 3 for 30 points. Heal 3 for 20 points and Surge 8 for 30 points or 3 if it replaces Fireball. I would probably replace Fireball because there's other ways to get your yeah, Fireball going off. It's, um, it's, it, it's alright, I suppose. Um, so, to have it working really well, to have the um, fuel for the fire and the inspiring working well, you need to focus on the flamebound stuff, which includes stuff like the Phoenix, the Greater Fire Elemental, the Fire Drake, surprisingly, the Fire Elementals, the Flame, sorry, the Ember Sprites, and I think... Um, the Mage Priest, obviously. Um, the Gokoki Sly Lord on Scorchwing, of course. Uh, Clan Lord on Fire Drake. And the Scorchwings. So, if you want to build an army around Flamebound stuff, you have a fair amount of options. And the Mage Priest can really help with that. Uh, Bane Chant 3, most armies only get Wizards with Bane Chant 2. So, having Bane Chant 3 is a really, really good thing. If you want to get the piercing off, I mean, gives piercing for the range attack. So, could be useful on the Scorch Wings, could be useful on Fire Drakes, Phoenixes. Could actually be really useful on Corsairs, actually. Um, you need two successful hits with uh, Bane Chant for piercing one to go off. So, to have three dice with Bane Chant is really good. I possibly say you you could if you go on flame bound heavy on flame bound stuff always take one if you're not then maybe consider it next we have the battle captain which is a heavy infantry hero speed five melee three plus defense five plus three attacks nerve 11 13 55 points crush strength two individual mount on raptor increases speed to eight and change the hero cavalry for 25 points path of fire can only have one of these in your force Gaining Aura Pathfinder, Heavy Infantry only, for 15 points. This unique upgrade cannot be taken in addition to a Magical Artifact or a Raptor Mount. 
I don't see why these one one pair army upgrades can't have a mount as well. I really don't get it. Um, it's a cheap hero. Um, if I had a few more attacks, I'd say maybe go for it. But nah, it's too few attacks. I'm afraid for me. Battle captain on Ryosaur, large cavalry hero. Speed seven, melee three plus, defense five plus. Six attacks, nerve dash 15, 140 points. Brutal crush track two, nimble thunderous charge one. I'd maybe consider these, this one. It's a little bit expensive, but it's only 40 points more than the um, clan lord, and the nerve's better. It's got a few more attacks. You've got thunderous charge, you've got brutal. Um, you can also do flank and rear charges because you're a large cavalry so um, hasn't got inspiring which is a little bit odd oh no no battle captains on foot haven't got inspiring either so mm, I'd, I'd still think about taking one anyway they're pretty pretty decent next we have the clan lord on fire drake which is a titan hero Speed 10, melee 4+, plus, range 4+, plus, defense 5+. Plus. 15 attacks, nerve 17, 19, 300 points. Crush strength 2, fly, inspiring and nimble. It's got fly, fire breath, which is 12 inch range, steady aim. Um, is the normal fly, fire drake supposed to fly? I don't know. Um, pass. I'm going to say pass. Um... It is 90 points more, but you get more attacks, you get inspiring, you get a lot more attacks with shooting as well. Uh, I don't see why it doesn't hit in threes in close combat. I'd have thought it would because the clan lord does, but hey how. It is what it is, uh, nerves better as well. Um, I'd give this as a thought, I'd give it a thought. Next we have the Kokoki Clutch Warden, Hero Infantry. Speed 7, melee 3 plus, range 4 plus, defence. 4 plus. 4 attacks, nerve 10, 12, 95 points. Duelist, individual, inspiring, Kokoki only, Pathfinder, Scout, stealthy and vicious. It's got a blowpipe which is 18 inch range. Don't know why it can't take a bow. Or I ain't got steady aim on the blowpipe, but never mind. Um, if you're going Kokoki heavy, maybe consider these. Other than that, uh, no. It hasn't got the crushing strength or oomph. It's only five points less than the Clan Lord, and the Clan Lord's way, way better. Unless you're going heavy on the Kokoki stuff, then I, I'd probably go for one, two of these. Kokoki Sky Lord on Scorchwing is the last hero. Large Cavalry hero. Speed 10, melee 3 plus, range 3 plus, defense 4 plus. Four attacks, nerve 11, 13, 120 points. Fly, inspiring, flame bound only. Nimble, vicious, it's got fire sparks which is 18 inch range, steady aim. These are all right if you want a fast moving inspiring unit. The problem with it is it really should have a few more attacks. Four attacks, yes it hits on threes, but it hasn't got crushing strength. Um, do the normal scorch wings, yeah they've got thunderous charge, I don't know why this hasn't got thunderous charge. Um, it's good if you do flame bound heavy army. Other than that, nah. Finally, we have the unique units on page 56. Starting with Firebrand, Hero Heavy Infantry. Speed 5, melee 3 plus, range 4 plus, defense 5 plus. 5 attacks, nerve dash 15, 120 points. Aura, Elite in melee, Corsairs only, Crush Strength 2, Duelist, Individual, Inspiring, and I thought it'd be Inspiring on Corsairs only, but okay. Uh, pistols, 12 inch range, piercing 1. It's a bit shorter range than the Corsairs weapons, uh, shooting, but he has got good crushing strength, hits on 3 to close combat, oh no, sorry, she, because it is a female, uh, Individual, Inspiring. Shame she's not got mighty. Well, no. Well, um, if you're doing a corsair heavy list, which yeah, um, they are regular, so uh, it's possible to get a few corsair units out there. 
Um, elite in melee c will help their melee prowess no end. Um, Nerve of Dash 15 is really helpful. She's a fairly cheap hero. She is only 20 points more than a clan lord. Um, she's quite a few more points than a battle captain, but she's a lot better than a battle captain. Next we have Ar Ar Tackle. I think that's how you pronounce it. Hero Infantry. Speed 7, melee 3+, plus, range 3+, plus, defense 4+. Plus. 5 attacks, nerve 11, 13, 135 points. Duelist, individual, inspiring, Gokoki only. Pathfinder, scout, stealthy and vicious. Monster Hunter. This unit has piercing 2 with its blowpipe weapon when attacking monsters and titans. Blowpipe, which is 18 inch range, piercing 1. Still don't understand why it hasn't got steady aim, but never mind. Um, has got stealthy, which is nice. Um, against monsters and titans got piercing two with five attacks that could really annoy people that could really annoy people maybe consider um, it's 135 points which I think it's a bit expensive unless you're going hot, heavy on the Gokoki stuff um, that stuff like the Sky Lord on Scorchwing that's the Clutch Warden um, what else have we got for them? That's the Slasher, the the Kakoki Warriors, and the Kakoki Hunters. Um, yeah, consider it if you're going high on Kakokis, but otherwise, ugh. um, it's a good harassment unit at range, but uh, a little bit too expensive for me. They've kind of got all bases covered. They have got basic infantry. They've got ranged infantry. They've got good cavalry. They've got good heavy hitting units. They've got good light, light cheap chaff units if you want to mass them out. They've got good harassment flying stuff. They've got good technic. They've technically got war machines with the Lechleodon and the Commododon. They've got good heavy. Um, Titans. Uh, heroes aren't bad either, though obviously the normal caveats of what I think of cheap inspiring units and cheap and cheerful heroes and what I think still applies. Their Mage Priest is really really decent, especially if you're going heavy on fire flame bound stuff, sorry. Um, they, they cover all bases. The main downside of them is that they are not cheap when when you think about it but then again they are big lizards also they are kind of easy to charge because they're fairly big base wise um, their shooting is a little bit short range unless you think of things like the commodes on which is their six inch range they've got a little bit of long range shooting but mostly they've got 18 inch which is a little bit short that being said though they have got all bases covered. They they are a jack of all trades army, and like all armies in Kings of War, if you're a good player, you can really romp home with them. You really, really can. So that's it for this video. Goodbye for now. Yeah.